In this video, we're gonna be talking about tree sitter for NeoVim. So you can head over to the NeoVim from scratch repository if you're following along with the series and check out the O8 tree sitter branch. Um, and you should have all of the same code that you see in this video when we get to configuring it and installing it all. If you're using your own config, that's fine too, um, but you can find all of the code here so you can you know, set it up that way. All right, so I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just show you some, uh, like the reason, the main reason that you're probably going to want to use TreeSitter. So let me just open up a file really fast. So we'll just open up this file here and you can see all of this really nice syntax highlighting, right? So you can see, you know, our functions, our particular color, um, all of our keywords, our particular color, um, like our import statements and all that good stuff. So you can see that we have like just nice colors, right? Um, and this is just syntax highlighting provided by TreeSitter. So let's see it without TreeSitter. So if we're gonna have a built-in command called TreeSitter and then disable all, and then we can pass it highlight. Okay, and this is what it would look like without TreeSitter. This is a JSX file, right? Um, JSX is particularly bad, I guess, without TreeSitter, but even still, like most other files look way better or most other languages look way better when you have proper syntax highlighting that's consistent. So again, we'll do TS enable uh, highlight and actually nothing happens for some reason, but if we go back in and open it back up, it, it is here, right? So yeah, I think this looks a lot better. I think this is the main reason most people are gonna to wanna to install TreeSitter and if you just want this, this is super easy to set up. So I definitely recommend doing this, but there is a lot more that you can do with TreeSitter and I'm gonna just scratch the surface with the rest of this video. All right, so now I should also mention that you sh will be able to find like more information, more documentation, all that good stuff about TreeSitter over on the repository here. Um, you can just go to MVim TreeSitter, MVim TreeSitter on GitHub, and then you'll be able to find this here. Uh, let's talk about all the languages that it supports. So you'll see that there's a ton of language support, so likely your language is here somewhere. And they also kind of give you like, you know, ways to set it up, other, you know, interesting things. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into the advanced setup. I'm just gonna show you enough to get you started. And then I'll show you a few other plugins that um, leverage TreeSitter to do cool stuff. All right, so let's get started with that. So, okay, we're still here. Let's go into our NeoVim config and let's open up Lua user plugins and we're going to do we're going to take a look at this one here um, one thing that's here is that when you install it it automatically runs ts update so that's just something you can do with packer um, you know however you install um, tree sitter you know you can use vim plug you can use whatever but we're using packer here and this is just going to automatically update all of your parsers when you install when you do uh, first install it and if you have, uh, well, none of it are gonna show up for me here, but it should, if you set maintained, and I'll show you that in a second, it should like update all of them automatically for you, right? And so that's what that's for. Anyway, so we're just using it there and that's pretty much it. So the next thing we're gonna do is go take a look at the file I have for it. So I'm gonna keep all of the configuration in one file called treesitter.lua. All right, and this is just requiring it in a protected call so that nothing breaks. Um, you know, it's just basically just requiring it. That's all that's happening there. And then here we have the setup. So this first line uh, is for ensure installed maintained. So this is all of the maintained uh, parsers and all that kind of good stuff. Basically all the languages that are maintained and likely will not break. Um, then we have this uh, sync install. So this is just something if, I guess you can install the languages asynchronously or synchronously with ensure installed. Um, I just have that set to false. I guess if you want it to true, you can do that. If you want to ignore a list, like if you thought like the Haskell one, uh, you didn't want it or something like that, or maybe you know you don't want the Python uh, one and you just want to use whatever built-in highlighting is available, you can add that there and it'll ignore those. Um, you probably do want it though, but so maybe you will only use this when something's like broken. All right, and now let's talk about this highlight here. So uh, this highlight section here, um, the highlight is how we're getting all of this good looking highlighting right now. 
Um, all you're going to have to do is just pass a table called highlight, uh, say enable equals true, uh, choose different languages to disable the highlighting if you don't want that, and then you can also add additional Vim uh, regular expression highlighting, which is the way that Vim used to do or still kind of does um, like highlighting, which is really not, uh, it's just not as good as the way the tree sitter does it. I'll just say that. Uh, there's also the option to enable indents, right? So indents are like if I, for instance, just go into enter, like if I go into insert mode here, you'll notice that it automatically uh, puts me where I kind of want to go, right? So if I go into insert mode, like, like if I press O, for instance, it'll put me right there. Like there might be some times where uh, it would put your cursor all the way back here, and that's not like indented to like the current scope, right? So you know, that's that's something that you'll notice throughout some languages, whether or not uh, the tree sitter one works well for you. For instance, it didn't work very well for me for YAML, and so I just disabled it for YAML, but for all their languages, I have it set to true. I know this is a thing for like Python, so if we just open up like a Python file right here, we do like dev, and we'll just do like a snippet here, right? You can see as I go in, it actually just like puts me where I'd expect to be, right? Instead of like, if I press enter here, sometimes it would just put you all the way back here and you don't want that. So that what's, that's what like the indent thing can do for you. All right, so that's the configuration. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna require that configuration in my init.lua file just to make sure that it is set up. So you can see it's in require user.treesitter and that's under lua user tree sitter. So that's all I'm doing right there. And that's pretty much all of the setup and showing you like basically what you're going to be using TreeSitter for. This is the 90% use case. Most people are just gonna want it for this and uh, nothing else. Um, you can pass a table to this so you only install the languages that you want so you don't have to use maintain. You can also put all for all of the ones that aren't maintained as well. So I figured I would note that as well. All right, so let's take a look at a few plugins that um, that require tree sitter and kind of uh, use tree sitter to give you some other cool functionality. Uh, the first one we're going to take a look at is NVIM TS Rainbow here. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you uh, rainbow parentheses. Uh, so I don't know if you've seen that, but it's like changing the color of parentheses that are nested so that you can tell like them apart. So we'll just grab this right here. We'll open up NVIM Lua user plugins. And I like to group all of my plugins, so we'll just do use and put that there. Install that. Okay, so now we have that. And what you will notice is that if we come in, you already notice that none of the parentheses are set up already. So let's go through some of this configuration here and see how we can enable it. It should be as easy as just copying this section into our tree, figure, tree sitter config. Um, section. All right, so let's get out of here again. We'll go to Lua, we'll go to user, we'll go to tree sitter. All right, and now we have rainbow enabled in here. So we have extended mode, whatever else. Um, you know, you can decide what, you know, what you wanna add to this, uh, to this config here. Okay, and now we'll open this up again, and now you can see that we have rainbow parentheses, and we have the ability to, uh, you know, kind of tell our scopes apart, right? So sometimes it can get pretty crazy when you have like a lot of uh, parentheses, for instance, uh, and I don't have autocomplete, so it didn't already do that for me. So yeah, that's gonna look weird unless I guess I, uh, you know, put them in like this. There you go, right? And so you can tell them all apart. All right, so that's one. Uh, the other one that I'm gonna take a look at is gonna be called Tree Sitter Playground. And what Tree Sitter Playground is gonna do, um, let me install it first and then I'll talk about what it does. And this will be more useful to people who are actually wanna develop plugins for Tree Sitter or are working on color schemes or something like that, then this will be more useful for you. I don't think this will be super useful for someone who just you know wants the syntax highlighting and other just normal text editor stuff. This is more of like a um, a deeper dive, I guess, into tree sitter, right? All right, so we installed that. Um, I don't know. I think there's something we have to enable. Yeah, here we go. So it's going to be the same thing. We're just going to go back to that tree sitter file um, and go under Lua user tree sitter like this. 
we have under rainbow. Actually, let me see if I can just indent that. By, well, whatever. Let's do this to get rid of all that. Okay. So now what we can do is we can grab playground like this, paste it in here, <clears throat> get complained at, put a comma, and now move it over. I don't know why. Anyway, we could probably use like the, doesn't matter. In the future, I'll show you how to install like good Lua formatters and things like that. But for now, that's fine. So now what is this gonna do? Um, basically, you only really need to enable it. All this other stuff uh, is just key bindings and other junk that you can decide on whether or not you really want it. For the most part, we actually only care about enabling the playground. Okay, so you can just pass this to get started. So now let's reopen this and now we can do a couple things. So we can do TS and we'll press tab and you'll notice that if we go down to, well, oh, there it is. So TS playground toggle, okay? And now you'll notice that we have this, um, this syntax tree over here. So you'll notice that, okay, um, this is kind of where, like this is what this is, right? So it's a local variable de declaration. That's what that is up there. And what's nested under that is a variable um, declarator. So that's the FN, I guess, an identifier. I would have actually expected that, I guess, to be the local, but whatever an identifier, a field expression, um, some other identifier under that. So you can see how it's like all nested, right? Here's a comment and we know that's a comment. And so now you can kind of get this, you know, abstract, abstract syntax tree and it'll highlight all of the stuff to the left here. Um, so you know, you know, what that is considered to be by tree sitter, right? So yeah, so hopefully that's useful to you. Um, if you're maybe working on some sort of plugin or something like that. The other thing that is if you're working on um, color schemes that you, that you want to be tree sitter enabled, then what might be more useful to you is something like this. If we do TS um, highlight captures under cursor, okay, it's going to tell me, um, I think that's like a weight, so it's telling me like it's, I don't know what their weighting system is here, but it's pretty sure, and I don't think there's any other options here, that this is a uh, tree sitter, TS stands for tree sitter, tree sitter variable. Okay, so what we would expect is, for instance, empty here is yellow, it's a different color, and we can recognize that to be a function. So if we run that over top of that, we can see that it's either a property or a function, but function wins out a little bit. It's a little bit more sure that it's a function than it's sure that it's a property. So it gets colored as a function would by the color scheme. Um, let me actually, and, and you know, we can do this on top of all kinds of things, and we can see, you know, what the highlight group is for something. So let me really quickly uh, show you some color scheme stuff. So if we go under where I keep all of my color scheme stuff and we go under this templates thing I have, we'll go under this here. You can see that uh, we'll go down to TS. These are a bunch of tree sitter highlight groups here. So if you're working on your own color scheme, you can you know check this out here, um, all these different highlight groups and you'll be able to kind of set them the way that you want. And it's kind of like that tool that I showed you earlier, the TS highlight captures under cursor is kind of useful as you're going through and creating a color scheme. You can go and find out what NeoVim considers or what tree sitter considers to be different um, like keywords or you know, whatever it may be, right? So yeah, so hopefully that's useful to someone who wants to create a color scheme. Hopefully the MVim, or, or not the MVim, the, uh, the uh, playground, the tree sitter playground uh, extension is hope is helpful to people who want to create like tree sitter based, um, you know, refactoring tools or whatever else, you know. So yeah, I think um, I don't, I don't want to go too into depth with all this kind of stuff though. I feel like you know that would be better served in like another video. But this is enough to just get you started, kind of just like a tree sitter quick start. Um, so that you can add it to your config, get 80 to 90% of the useful stuff that you want out of it. And if you're interested in a few other things, then you can check out these other um, repositories and plugins here. Um, as always, I'll leave uh, links in the description to all of the repositories so you can easily find them. All right, so if you enjoyed the video, uh, consider sponsoring me over on, uh, over on GitHub, uh, where the NeoVim from scratch uh, repository is or over on Patreon. They're both available here.
So that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.